So I'm Nova, nice to meet you. Um, viewers, I appreciate you watching this video. I wanted to come on here and make this video because I just had a coccygectomy and microdiscectomy at the same time, which I'll get into what that means later. Um, but there's like no, there's like one or two videos about coccygectomy and like the recovery process that people have gone through. And I found it like really difficult to kind of find information about um, like the recovery process of both of those, to be honest. But thankfully, like I had the Facebook support group. So like if you're about to have a microdiscectomy or coccygectomy, you can go on Facebook, find the support groups. There's so much information on there. The only problem is like some people are really mean. <laughs> I feel like they're really great. Most of the people are really great. But like some people, I've had experiences where they're like, you don't even need surgery. Like your MRI looks fine. Like stop complaining. And I'm just like, wow, that's messed up. That's so messed up. Like I, I suffered for three years of chronic back pain, low back pain. Um, I had a nightmare of an experience. Um, maybe I'll share that in a separate video because it's, it's a whole three years process that got me up into where I am right now. And that is happy and virtually pain free. So, <laughs> but before that, it was really, really, really hard. I mean, I have videos of like, like looking back on those videos, I have videos of me like sobbing and like, I'm going to cry. Um, and just feeling so hopeless because no one's listening to me. No one's helping me because I'm only 24. Have, well, I was only 24. I'm 25 now. I was only 20. I was what, like 20. I'm like trying to do math right now. I was 22 when this all started. So like no one believed that I was in as much pain as I was saying I was in. And like I got gaslit by doctors. Anyway, I'll make a separate video, I'm sure, of that. Um, but it was a horrible, horrible process to get to where I am today and I am so grateful to be here right now and to be where I'm at right now um so yeah let me get into it sorry rambling okay so yeah so I just had a microdiscectomy and a coccygectomy four weeks ago so I am sitting on a coccyx cushion um I have two actually so I have this one I got this one from CVS it was $25 and that's actually part of the way that I found out um, that my coccyx was also affecting me um, because I got the coccyx cushion and it actually alleviated like a lot of my pain. So yeah, but anyway, so if you're having like low back pain, I suggest you getting one of these. This one I really don't like as much. It's really firm and it's like on this weird slant, um, which is weird and it kind of actually hurts my back sitting on it so not a fan really that one was like 40 bucks uh this one was actually 25 bucks i'm sitting on it but it was from cvs um yeah and it's just great like i wouldn't be able to be sitting here right now if i didn't have it um yeah yeah so anyway back to the recovery process so i just had my l5s1 microdiscectomy and a coccygectomy at the same time four weeks ago um so the microdiscectomy sutures, they it healed up really quickly. It was actually dissolvable stitches that I had and they put the surgical glue on top of it. So it kind of just looked like, um, like what is that? Like the rubber glue. Um, it looked like that and it kind of felt like that too. And then eventually the glue just peeled off on its own um, after, you know, probably like two and a half weeks. And I was, I was kind of like touching it. You know, whatever. Like, it, uh, it's kind of hard not to. Um, but yeah, but it healed up really, really well. I was taking collagen um, to try and help, like, my body heal as fast as possible. And also, two months before my surgery, I stopped eating processed foods and I stopped eating sugar. And I only ate, like, fruits and nuts and vegetables. And honestly, I only ate so much fruits and nuts that my pH level was 9 out of... 10 right so it was really high so actually my doctor was like yeah like you need to just know that that's high so I had to incorporate some meat into it which you need meat anyway I mean don't come at me just meat helps you your body heal so like red meat um and milk actually help your body heal um after researching a lot of this stuff I found that out. So I started incorporating some red meat, which also probably balanced out my pH back to normal. Um, 
But yeah, I think that had a huge play into my recovery being so quick and so speedy. Quick and speedy are the same word. Being quick and, you know, pain-free-ish. Ish. Just fast healing. Um, the coccygectomy uh, st stitches not so great, I would say. I still have one stitch in and I'm four weeks in. I just had three removed today and I had I think three or four removed last week um yeah so I've had a lot of people on the Facebook group say that the coccygectomy healed really quickly and like that I shouldn't have any problems about that it healed really fast and that the microdiscectomy like oh like how am I getting them both at the same time how am I going to do physical therapy if I can't sit down and yeah, people were like, don't, like, they were telling me, like, don't do it. Don't get both surgeries at once. Like, you're going to regret it. You're going to hate your life. Like, how are you even going to recover? This is a dumb idea. And I was just like, well, I'm getting them both. Like, I've begged my doctor to have both of these procedures done. Um, so I'm doing it. But thank you for your opinion. Um, but yeah, whatever. That's okay because <laughs> they really did psych me out a little bit and I'm like am I doing am I making a mistake like am I pushing my like surgeon to do these procedures and like I'm gonna regret it but no I don't regret it I'm so glad that if you're in pain and you think you have and, and you not think like I have an MRI that shows my herniated disc and I believe it got worse after the MRI because I had the MRI done a year ago um actually yeah pretty much like 12 months ago so I know it got a lot worse than it was um and he my surgeon actually almost wanted to go back in and do an MRI and see if it was worse so that my insurance had like a more like likelihood of approving it but my insurance ended up approving it anyway um after my surgeon like really kind of like told them like hey come on like let's do it she's already going under surgery like let's do both of them at the same time so I'm really really grateful for my surgeon um he has like four point eight stars I think it's maybe like a little bit lower now um I think it's like 4.1 stars um but yeah that like I was like you know because I had a bad experience actually with my surgeon at first and but he had really high ratings so I'm like he's a good surgeon regardless of like whatever kind of feelings I have towards him he is a good surgeon so yeah so yeah so um Anyway, so finally, yeah, I got I got that stuff approved. So thankfully, this yeah, it worked out. So anyway, so my coccygectomy sutures. Um, so here, I mean, I only watch this video, please, if you're gonna coccygectomy or you want to learn about coccygectomies, because I'm about to tell you a lot of information that I did not know going into it, and it's not all fun and flowers and unicorns. You know, it's surgery and near your butt okay so just disclosure um this isn't pleasant it's not a pleasant conversation i'm having here i'm just wanna i just want people to know because i didn't have a lot of information going in about this and it really was hard to like kind of have to learn all of this by myself so um i'd like to like share what i went through and maybe it'll help somebody else like while they're going through th their recovery process or at least know what to expect so that you're not going into it without having any idea. So yeah. So with the coccygectomy surgery, it's obviously right there at your bum. Um, so it's right there by your colon and you know, your butthole. Um, so the thing is with coccygectomies is there's a 10% chance of infection, which is about like the highest, that's like one of the highest uh, Chance, risks of infection for surgery and the reason of that is because it's right next to your butt and like that's where you poop and E. coli can cause infections obviously um yeah and yeah so there it's definitely important to like keep it really clean my surgeon didn't tell me that he actually put that surgical glue on top of the hard stitches so I had non-dissolvable stitches in my coccygectomy um like wound so that's why I still have to, like I have to get one removed it sucks the plastic stitches suck they itch so bad like 
they poke like so, so it's in your butt crack so like literally your butt your gut cheek cheek and in your butt crack that's where the cut is that's where the incision is mine's a little bit on top of the cheek but i've heard of some people's being straight down the middle um but so those little plastic freaking stitches are poking my butt they're poking my butt cheeks and it's getting so irritated like it's so itchy it's so annoying and like you have to make sure like if it itches which it got to a point actually where it was itching so bad but i think that's because i was so okay let me backtrack so after surgery it's really hard to have a poop i'm gonna say these words i actually don't know what i'm allowed to say on youtube but um but yeah so basically it's really hard to have a poop after you have your tailbone removed because that whole area is really inflamed after the surgery so it makes like going into the bathroom hard and then add the the opioids that they give you for pain relief and that causes constipation so that's how you it's very likely that you're going to get like impacted stool um so and to avoid that they give you they gave me something called stimulant which i believe was just a senna based um laxative so it's like laxative stool softener and they they want you to take like four tablets a day to kind of because the thing is if you're straining to poop it could actually like ruin the surgery it could ruin the surgery site it could cause a lot of bleeding so straining is something that they want to prevent so they give you stimulants the only problem was for me like the stimulant that they gave me and it doesn't like keep you awake i was worried to take it the first day because i'm like stimulant like i need to go to sleep but it actually it has nothing to do with like stimulating your brain it is just stimulating your poop your digestive tract so yeah so just don't be alarmed if yours says stimulant like it's not caffeine it's just poop ease <laughs> um but yeah so but i had a really bad reaction to the stimulant because i wasn't taking it at first as i said because i was worried that it was going to keep me awake and i wasn't sure like how it worked and i couldn't find any information online about it so i just waited to take it in the morning and like by then it was too late i hadn't gone poop for like a whole day i had to go poop really bad before the surgery but they they got me in like um three hours earlier than they were supposed to for the surgery so they were like rushing me they were like take your clothes off have these like cloths like wipe your body down like come on let's go like doctor's almost ready for you and like i was like damn like i have to poop like i legit am like pinching my butt cheeks like i have to poo and like they're about to i was like so worried that i was gonna poo on the operating table <laughs> i'm like beef that's like the last thing i was thinking of when they put me on under anesthesia i'm like dude I really hope I don't poop on this operation table right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> but obviously I didn't. Um, so I hadn't pooped that whole day. And then it was, it hurt so bad when I got home. Um, so I wasn't able to poop the next day because I was like, I'm not pooping. Like regardless of how much I have to, there's no way I'm going to try to poop right now. And I think it was like that for maybe two or three days. And by like the third or fourth day, I was like, okay, like obviously I really have to poop. Like physically, it's not good to like have that poop sitting there and like, you know, eating still and just kind of getting stopped up. So then I was like, okay, like I got to do something about this. Like, so I started, so I drank a little bit of milk and magnesia. And then I also started taking the stimulants and I was taking two a day because I didn't read the bottle because probably I was on medications that were making me feel a little bit loopy but so you're supposed to take four of them a day at least the one i was prescribed and so i was only taking two a day so by the third or fourth day i was like oh no so i started taking four a day and like can i say the s word poop hit the fan okay poop hit the fan it was bad it was really bad i think i was having like a really bad reaction or maybe it was because i tried the milk of magnesia first but it was scary so first i had to take an i had to do an enema because i had impacted stool because it had been three or four days since i pooped and the opioids like drain your poop of liquid so they get really hard like cement at the bottom of of your colon so i use the enema um i would definitely recommend if you're getting a coccygectomy surgery have a four pack of enemas ready to go seriously you are gonna want it because you it hurts so bad to poop 
you even if like it's not impacted stool it the first day it's gonna be a lot better if you just do an enema and like get it going because straining at all during the first three to five days is a nightmare it is really painful it's awful and obviously if you strain you can ruin it so you can't strain so yeah so i mean this is like a lot of poop talk i'm sorry but like this is something i did not know going into it and i am just hoping that this helped somebody else so yeah so i did an enema and then it's like all those stimulants and the milk magnesia started kicking in and it was a nightmare and i was urgently having to get up for explosive diarrhea um like I like nine times a day the first day was nine times and I like getting up urgently to go not poop your pants hurts a lot after two procedures even if even if it was just one procedure it would hurt a lot to get up quickly out of bed and go to the and run to the bathroom and I had to do it nine times and I was like this is not okay and so I took um, Imodium. So I was like, I don't even care if I'm constipated. Like, this is a nightmare. And the thing is, like, with the explosive, I know this is TMI. I'm sorry, but, like, here you go. Here's some information. Um, but with the explosive diarrhea, like, it would make the toilet water splash up. And I'm, I was, like, paranoid. So every time I had to go poop, so nine times on, like, the second, their third day after surgery, nine times I had to wash the wound with, water and then I put um and triple antibiotic ointment on it and then I put gauze on it and then I had tegaderm that I had purchased and I put the tegaderm over it and I did that like nine times and then the tegaderm actually started like ripping up my butt cheeks like it made them really like sore because I changed it so many times but every time I went poop I was like what if there's like a small particle of poop that gets onto the gauze and the gauze is sitting on my wound all day and then it gets infected and then they have to go, if it gets infected, like, they could have to go back in and do another surgery to remove the infection. So, like, you really want to be cautious of infection with a coccygectomy. Like, it's serious. It's a very serious thing. So, I was kind of in panic mode, like, washing it, washing it. And I just spoke to my doctor today. I was like, yeah, I was putting triple antibiotic on it. He's like, that's good. That's probably really good that you were doing that. Um, I was like, yeah, of course. But a lot of people on the Facebook group, they're like, don't put it on there. And I'm like, clearly, clearly, I, I know I shouldn't be putting it on there. But like, I'm not also not going to have an infection. Like, I refuse to have to have another surgery after this. So, yeah. So, it worked out. The only problem is because that is such a... Um, airless you know like it's not it's like a little cave in your butt crack and so it doesn't get a lot of air to dry it out so I think the triple antibiotic that I was putting on it and the constant washing that I was doing caused me to have like a bit of a diaper rash which made the wound site so itchy when I tell you it was so itchy nobody told me that it was going to be itchy and I know I was putting triple antibiotic on it but I think regardless, like, it would have been that itchy. Because right now I'm not putting triple antibiotic on and it's still, like, it itches sometimes. Like, it's it's the freaking stitches and the sensitive skin down there. And it's it's a nightmare. It was so itchy one day that I was like, I'm going to rip these stitches out with my bare hands. Like, <laughs> it was really, really itchy. It was a nightmare. Like, there was, I was like, what do I do? I was taking antihistamines. So that helped a little bit with the itchiness. Um... But yeah, like pretty much drying it out. Use an air dryer if you can. That helps the itchiness. Um, what I did too, because a lot of my itchiness was caused because of the plastic stitches. So I would, I would literally wash my hands really thoroughly, grab one of the stitches and like tuck it under gauze so the stitch wasn't poking me anymore. So you have to find that sweet spot with the gauze and then slap some Tegaderm on top of it or medical tape or whatever. I think the Tegaderm worked really well. But I think actually, now that I'm thinking about this, because my wound wasn't drying out very well, but that could have been because I put Tegaderm on it every single time. So there wasn't really any air getting through. It was just, you know, en encapsulated, I guess. So to backtrack a little bit, um, I'll tell you exactly like what happened after my surgery. So I woke up 
Um, I really, really, really had to pee. Like, it was an emergency. Like, I just didn't even care. Like, I didn't even care about anything but, like, the fact that I was just going to pee. Like, so I told them, I'm like, I really have to pee. Like, and they're like, well, we could try to, like, walk you to the... And I was like... <laughs> I was like, no, I'm not walking. Like, you're crazy. What? There's no way. I, I wasn't, I wasn't, the thing is the pain didn't even really register at that point. I just knew like, I'm not walking. I'm not doing that. So she's like, okay, well we could get you a bedpan or they had like this weird suction thing. I think she called it like Mr. Yuck or something. And it was like a suction thing and you literally pee. It's like a pad that's like attached to a vacuum basically. And you pee on the pad and then it like sucks up the urine so I was like that just do that like I don't want I don't want to get up and have a bedpan under me I don't and that sounds messy so I did the suction cup thingy and it's not a cup I did the suction thingy and I peed on it but then like pee went everywhere and I didn't even care I was like I'm just peeing I literally have to go so bad I don't I don't care if I'm peeing all over myself right now but I didn't I just peed all over the bed and so I like I was like not registering pain quite yet so I even like got up and I squatted like squatted on my knees and got up and like tried to move the blankets over and like put it a ball it up for the nurse to take and she's like she came in and she's like oh what are you doing like why are you like I was like I can't I can't just be sitting on my own pee and so she's like oh my gosh she's like you're crazy <laughs> I was like well I'm not gonna be gross about it but um so then they're like, okay, so like, I guess everybody who's like post-op just kind of lays in a room together, like all just unconscious and like the nurses just like take vitals or something. I don't know how it works, but like, it was like weird. Like I was like in a room and they're like, she's awake, like bring her to her room. And I was like, it's weird. That's kind of weird, like sci-fi stuff, I guess. But yeah, so I got to the room and then the pain hits me and it hurts so bad it hurt so bad like it was really painful <laughs> like I had two surgeries and like wow did it feel like I had two surgeries I was I was prepared for the pain it was actually kind of a little bit better than I was expecting um I was expecting worse pain than I was in but looking back whew, that was a rough one that was a rough one so she gave me Norco's I was, she was like, do you want pain medicine? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I, I do. And she's like, okay, give her Norco's. And she's like, I'm going to give you cyclobenzaprine too, which is a muscle relaxant. Just because I was laying down for so long that your muscles could start like tensing up. So she gave me that. Cyclobenzaprine just knocks me out. So I fell asleep for six hours after that. But before that, I heard her on her walkie, like talking to the nurse that was with me in the other room. And she's like, yeah, she's like, she wants the Norco's now. She's in a lot of pain. And the other nurse I hear on the walkie, she's like, she was just up, like, squatting on her bed. <laughs> she said she was in no pain. <laughs> and the nurse is like, oh, okay, uh-huh, uh-huh. But, like, clearly I'm in pain now. Like, she's like, yeah, that's okay that she wasn't in pain, but she is now. It's okay. Um, But, yeah, so I, I knocked out for six hours, and then I woke up. And she was like, okay, like, and so it was pretty much like, do you think you want to go home today? Like, how are you feeling? And I was like, yeah, actually, it's not, it's not so bad as I thought, you know? Um, and I was up, like, trying to, like, get some steps in and just kind of feel it out. Like, I was, like, up walking around. Like, I'm like, I gotta get, like, active. I've been laying it around for, like, too long right now. And I just want to make sure I can do stuff on my own. Um... I was going to have to once I get home so they're trying to send my prescription over and I'm like well how am I gonna pick up my prescription I was gonna have Medicaid um just drive me home after the surgery because I don't really have any family but um yeah then like that started to not sound like such a good idea because she's like basically the Medicaid will just get you like an Uber and then they drop you off at your house and like say goodbye like they don't care about you I mean they could like you never know who it's going to be though is what her point was so I called my ex and I was like hey like can you drive me home and he's he's the one who dropped me off at my surgery so like he was more than willing I just didn't want to have to rely on him um but yeah so Anyway, where am I going with this? Okay, so that was six hours I slept, okay, at the hospital. Six hours. And then here's 
the kicker, the nurse, before I left, I left at like 6.30 p.m. And before I left, she did not give me another dose of the hydrocodone. So I'm allergic to codeine. So they gave me hydrocodone with Tylenol. I, I don't know what they'll give you, but I can't have codeine. So um, they might give you code codeine with Tylenol. Yeah, Tylenol number three. But I had the hydrocodone with Tylenol. Anyway, so they sent me home with no pain medication. And I lived 45 minutes away from the hospital. And that was a nightmare. It was just as bad as I expected getting home. The car ride home was just as bad as I had imagined in my head that it was going to be. It was horrible. And be before we even stopped home, I had to go to the pharmacy to pick up the hydrocodone so I could take them. And the uh, cyclobenzaprine and the stimulant that they send over there. So I literally, like, it was like 45 minutes of suffering like it was so painful and I don't know why the nurse didn't give me another medication she probably figured I was gonna go home and 10 minutes away you know grab my medication and take one but that was not the case that 45 minutes I couldn't sit so I at first was laying down in the back seat and um not in this car but in my ex's car so I was laying down but when I like grabbed the handle like that's up here and I laid down I felt like a little like a crunch and I was like oh no like I ruined it I ruined my surgery already like I was really really worried about that so then like halfway through I'm like this is not doing it like my neck is like this against the door and like it was awful and uncomfortable and I was I was just imagining if he slams on his brakes then I'm gonna fly so I was like, I have to t like get control of like my body right now. Um, so I so I sat up and kneeled like right behind the seat here, um, in his car, and I was kneeling, just holding on to this for like dear life, holding on to his a little bit, and just like ow, 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 like miserable, like get me home, get me home. It was so bad. It was awful. So hopefully, like if you remember before you get sent home if you have like a far drive make sure you are medicated before you go home like please for me please make sure you're medicated because i don't want you to suffer and it was really bad and i don't she, the nurse like it's not like her fault i mean it is a little bit but she was so nice i would i hate to like feel bad i hate to like be upset with her she's she was so nice it's nurse of the year she just didn't give me the pain medication after my surgery <laughs> <laughs> no biggie um but yeah honestly so the 45 minutes it was really that was the worst part of the whole surgery and also it's very annoying after the surgery not being able to pick stuff up after you drop them drop it like I drop a lot of stuff daily <laughs> I'm just very I just drop stuff I don't know <laughs> there's no excuse I just do it and um so I have those two, like I have a grabber thing and then I have another grabber thing in case I drop my grabber thing, which I did. And so buy two grabber things. I'm talking like the extendo where you clamp it. I got mine from the dollar store, but I kind of do wish I had tested it out on like round objects. Like, uh, for example, like a water bottle because it was kind of hard picking round objects up with it because there wasn't much of a grip. But it worked it, it got the job done and also like you get really bored and you like want to start picking stuff up off the ground or like cleaning so it's like a nice therapeutic like at least i can do something and i'm not completely helpless here so bye grabbers um also i asked my nurse before i left if i would need a toilet seat razor and she was like no no you'll be fine unless you have like a really low toilet seat and i was like yeah i don't think i do should be fine and so then I get home <laughs> and I went to pee and I could not reach my toilet seat. Like I went down and down. I was like, no, I can't. Like I literally can't go any farther down and be without like dying. <laughs> and so like I had to stand peeing up and I posted it on Facebook in one of the Facebook groups. And surprisingly enough, somebody who was in my area um, had two toilet seat razors that she was about to like give away. And she was like, yeah, like you can have them. And so my, I, I sent my ex to go pick it up because I'm like, I really can't sit down on my toilet. <laughs> so make sure that your toilet seat is high enough for you to reach. And 
like fortunately I have like my sink here and like I took the toilet paper roll out so I had something to grab there so I was able to use that but you might want to have like grabby thingies actually once that lady gave me the toilet seat riser it was the one with the two handles on top of it wonderful I, I recommend that one for sure um she gave me another one but it didn't have the handles and it was a little bit taller but the handles really helped me a lot so I would recommend doing that um yeah I'm trying to think what else yeah, the grabber yeah and like something that i knew going in because like a lot of people on facebook told me this was that your hips start to hurt a lot because you're literally just laying on your hips the whole time and it's true it's really true like for four days for not four days for four weeks straight i've basically just been laying on my hips and like it does really hurt like the thing is you're laying on your hips for so long and it starts to hurt so then you have to like get up and like flop <laughs> like you literally just like flop on the other on the other hip and like lay there until it hurts and then flop on the other hip um i had a tablet in my hand so like i had a tablet with a case that has a handle on it so i was able to just like watch movies on it um with that yeah i feel like you won't be like really up for reading sorry readers like you probably just don't want to do that like you probably just want to watch tv and the tv watching is really old after like two or three weeks like then you're just like i want to like live my life again like oh get me out of this bed like i've seen all of the shows that i wanted to watch but like just don't even overdo it like seriously if you have enough time to take off like two months take off two months and don't do anything just watch tv in your bed seriously because you don't want to ruin it and there's a lot of stories on facebook of people saying you know don't overdo it like two weeks later i was starting to feel good and then i ruined it like i bent over and grabbed something and i ruined it and like it still hurts to this day it's been like six years there's a lot of stories on facebook like that and i was like that's not going to be me like i'm 25 now like I need to have my life back and be a normal human being because I cannot live in pain like I was. Oh, it was so hard. Um, yeah. So just take it easy. Like, take it easy as much as you can. And also, your nurse will probably tell you this, and people on Facebook told me this too, but, like, if you have to wake up in the middle of the night, like, set an alarm, wake up in the middle of the night and take your pain medication don't let don't wait till it hurts because after you take your pain medication you have to wait two hours after that and so that will be two hours of pure torture like it's not fun i actually did that and probably like the fourth or fifth no not fourth or fifth maybe like sixth or seventh day all the days kind of tie into each other but i want to say like maybe a week later i was like i i think i could start stop taking my pain medication and like see where i'm at pain wise big mistake <laughs> it was a big mistake i mean i mean honestly do that periodically but like maybe wait longer than a week um but obviously you don't want to like keep taking the pain medication if you don't have to especially because um you can hold on to any ex extra pain medication in case you're ever in pain again you know at you know period cramps or something you know i have like a good supply left over that i can just hold on to in case you know in case my back starts hurting again or something but you don't want to like take it just to take it um especially because then you're feeling so good that you can't hurt yourself because you don't feel any of the pain um you still feel some of the pain but you know you don't want to you want to know you want to feel stuff that you're doing otherwise you could really hurt yourself so yeah but um so yeah I, like seven days after my surgery I, I stopped taking it and it started hurting a lot and so I took the pain medication obviously I was like oh no and uh yeah you have to wait like two hours for it to kick in and it so it's you're just sitting there like what did i do <laughs> why did i do this to myself so i think after that i probably waited like another week before trying that again so i'd say yeah two weeks in give it a shot like try try to stop taking your medication and see see how it feels um yeah i think i just I kept doing that I kept stop taking it and then like it would start hurting so bad at the end of the night and I would just take it just to be able to sleep and not be in like so much pain but throughout I was getting throughout the whole day without the pain medication um yeah and then I'd have to take it at night so and then I was just really trying to get off of it like as soon as possible for me the hydrocodone with Tylenol was making me throw up so they actually had to prescribe me um Zofran because 
that stuff like really nauseates me um it makes me feel like really sick but it's better than being in the pain but ugh, like i was having a really bad reaction to it so i was like trying to get off of it as soon as possible um but yeah i'm trying to think like i should have bullet pointed or something to keep this organized i know it's kind of been all over the place poop um supplies where we're at now pain meds um but yeah so i am so last week i went and did job interviews and let me tell you three weeks into my surgery recovery sitting down for a job interview is not recommended i just really needed to get a job because i was really bored <laughs> and i found a job as a front desk at a hotel um so i'm able to stand the whole day like if you can return to work like after like two three weeks as long as like you have like a standing job like standing in one place um if you have like an office job you're not going to be able to sit like 100 percent not going to be able to sit so if you can stand at your desk then you can return to work but it is not recommended to lift anything heavier than like a, a gallon of milk for the first three weeks so anything over eight pounds you're not supposed to lift for three weeks like and be take that seriously you don't want to get re-injured so the microdiscectomy healed really well obviously for microdiscectomies you still have a herniated disc they just took the bulging part that's impinging on your nerve out but your disc is still herniated so one wrong move and like it will go back onto that nerve and start causing you pain and sciatica again so be really cautious like you're not healed i i'm seeing a lot of people on facebook i didn't know this either i just learned this after my surgery but i see a lot of people on facebook and they're like yeah like you know like telling me this because they went and started living their life normal again and then they hurt it again and now they're in just much as much pain so like pretty much i me personally i was in so much pain that i will always live a modified life now I will not be bending over to grab anything. I, you know, squat, squat, pull it close to you, pull it to your chest, stand up if you need to lift anything. Like I will always be living a modified life now. And I'm okay with that because I'm living the modified life not in pain. Because before I was living the modified life in pain. So I will take modified life not in pain any day. And it's all preventative. Um, right now they haven't scheduled me for pelvic floor physical therapy or low back physical therapy um but yeah but th i mean that's up to your discretion i have already gone through so much low back physical therapy that i know what exercises to do so i've been doing you know clamshells as much as i can like while laying in bed um to strengthen my low back and i've been doing like leg lifts trying to do my core and also just like sucking in my stomach um, because I can't really get on my hands and knees yet and do that. But like just sucking in my stomach to try and tighten those ab muscles. A complication that you can have with the coccygectomy is that your intestines fall into where your coccyx was. Or like basically your coccyx isn't supporting your intestines so they fall down. And that actually happened to somebody in the Facebook group and he's going through that right now um so pray pray for him but um i'm really glad he shared that with us because i had just gotten mine and like i knew to be very cautious of that and i already know i had pelvic floor dysfunction so i went and purchased a perifit before my surgery so the perifit um is like this little device and it just helps you uh with your kegels it's a fun game on it's like a fun app on your phone I'm not like sponsored by them like I just been I just use this because I had bought a pelvic floor trainer before and it was really boring and like I was not going to use it like I hated it it like was hard to use I didn't know really how to use it and it was like it just sucked it was like beep and like you'd have to like do it well I don't even know like it just sucked so I was like I heard about this perifit thing so I tried it out and I'm glad I did like you want to have a, a strong pelvic floor so like that doesn't happen to you and you have that complication because that guy has to go into surgery again and have his intestines pulled up. So, yeah, like, that, kegels, do your kegels, do your pelvic floor. A lot of doctors will actually subs prescribe you um, pelvic floor physical therapy after your coccygectomy. 
mine didn't but i'm doing the peri fit at home and i'm doing i'm like just i'm researching pelvic floor physical therapy and doing it at my own like leisure at home if you're not a self-starter like don't don't risk it like go ask for physical therapy go to physical therapy strengthen your back strengthen your pelvic floor um, you don't want any complications with these surgeries but yeah all in all three weeks in i was feeling good enough to go to a, a job interview and get a job um i just started working two days ago so that's in my fourth week and it's been going great i've not been taking the hydrocodone anymore i stopped at about three weeks um I'm, I stopped taking the cyclobenzaprine too, probably like three weeks, maybe two weeks, because the cyclobenzaprine just knocks me out. But so now I just take like a naproxen after I eat and um, at work. And yeah, I'm pretty much, I'm in a lot less pain than I was before my surgery. And I'm only four weeks, like my wounds are still recovering, like they still have a stitch left in me. Um, to kind of heal that like there's I, it's still painful but it's not even close to the amount of pain that I was in beforehand and I just can't wait to see where I'm feeling in like two months um, because I think it's really hopeful and I think I can have my life back I, <laughs> I'm gonna cry um, because like I'm, I'm pretty young like I'm 25 and like my life has just been taken from me for the past three years while I was suffering and trying to convince a doctor to actually take me seriously um so yeah so I'm really excited I'm I'm also just a bit scared that I'm going to mess it up and be in that much pain again because it was just so much pain um so yeah I'm just being really careful really cautious I'm still sticking to the unprocessed food no no processed foods no sugar i did eat a lot of ice cream like two days ago because i earned it i was eating so healthy for so long i just was like i need ice cream but i'm gonna stick to like eating really healthy i'm gonna stay active you know keep up with home physical therapy and just make sure that i'm lifting properly and picking things up properly i still use my grabber at home because it i'll probably always use my grabber at home like save your back use a grabber <laughs> If you're at your house, use a grabber. Like, I don't care. You drop a little piece of paper, use a grabber. Like, there's no point in picking it up manually. Um, yeah. So, if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them down here. Um, I'm, like, willing to answer anything. Obviously, I'm pretty, like, open about all of the gruesome details of the this double surgery. So, yeah. Like, let me know. Any questions that you have, um, I'm, I'm happy to answer. Um, yeah. Uh, if you, I probably post like a couple more um, videos about like the chronic pain and like the, how I got my doctors to listen to me and all that. So if you want to learn more about that, go ahead and like and subscribe, and I will be posting that eventually soon here. So yeah. Um, thanks for watching. Bye.